Hello, Connor. Welcome, welcome. You're the first in. Doing something kind of different today that I thought would be fun. We're going to be doing some riffing. Oh, hello, Crusader Con. Hello, Red Guy. Hello, Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, everyone's showing up. Hello, Marvel Knight. Hmm. Thank you for the bits, Connor. Most appreciated. Always nice. Any donations that I get from now for the next couple months is going to be going, as you can see, to try and fund uh, Capes and Quest Chapter 2 or Season 2, whatever you want to call it. Uh, can I just say how glad I'm the notification system? Oh, well, I'm glad you're here, Super Dandy. I'm happy you're happy. Oh, uh, hello, SDL Thani. Welcome, welcome. We're doing something different here today than video games. I'm glad you can make it. I've been planning to try and do something like this for a little bit. Yeah, I'm surprised so many people were able to show up so quickly. I'm not, uh, I'm not used to that. I usually gotta put a little work in there. Yeah, notification squad working. Holy crap. Welcome, Party Pug. Welcome, Amazing Spider-Man. Wow, I picked a good day to do this. All the regulars are here. Holy crap. Hi, Space Lord. Welcome, welcome. I put this out on Twitter if people wanted to see me do something a little different that's not, you know, traditional comic book stuff. So uh, I figured you would like this one, because I always thought one of my big uh, strengths as a creator online was riffing. So I got one of my favorite topics here, 90s toy commercials. And as you can see, I've kind of tried to Frankenstein together <laughs> an overlay here. I probably could have made it look a little nicer, but I'm trying to, you know, uh, what is it? Keep a good aspect ratio in, because again, a lot of these are really low aspect ratios. And also I'm trying to make sure that I don't get, uh, don't get caught with any copy right there. Oh, thank you super dandy too for the bits again appreciated ah oh, well thank you i i loved those cbc riffs back when we did it you know i try and keep it going with matt but you know that was special people i don't know if people know this i picked just about every show that was on there that was me that was my weird pop culture ass knowledge at work mm. see the problem with doing something like uh, dbz abridged to do a watch along there is that it's already funny. What jokes can I make? It's already really funny. And thank you, Party Pug, for the subscription. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I hope. You see, here's the thing, Amazing Spider-Man. This I'm watching this big compilation through for the very first time. I haven't actually watched it, so I don't even know what's on it. So we're all gonna get surprised together. And now seeing that there's so many awesome 17 people here. I guess I can start now. I was I thought I was going to have to wait and stall for time a little bit until everyone showed up, but uh <clears throat> clearly lots of awesome people here. So let's uh let's hit play on this and let's see what happens. And I have restream over here in the corner so I can see your comments. Uh hopefully the volume is right. I think it is. I think this first one is for Super Soaker. So let's uh get started in 5 4 3 2 1. Mhm. Mm I never did many pool parties as a kid. Maybe that was because I lived in, like, cottage country, so, you know, it was more like lake parties is the thing. Man, I probably didn't swim into a, uh, like, regularly in a pool for a long-ass time until, like, the last few years because there's a condo here at the pool. Or uh, there's a pool here at the condo. Pfft, the fuck am I doing? I haven't had my coffee yet today. On those occasions when you need to make a big splash. Oh, hey, it's the Blues Brothers. Oh. This took a dark ass turn. <laughs> okay, so for those paying attention right here, these two kids got denied entry to the pool party by the mean girl. They got shunned, and their idea was is that they came back dressed like the Blues Brothers and shot everyone with their super soakers. Oh, oh, this is surely the 1990s right here when we didn't think anything was wrong with this. Hey, kids, if you have a problem, just shoot them up. <laughs> Oh, I can only imagine, Super Dandy. I can only imagine. I think we all know that friend who had the hot mom. <laughs> and a spray. So, so these kids just ruined the party, is what you're saying. We're on a mission from God. I will say, though, Super Soaker has made some goddamn awesome-looking uh, friggin' water guns. I always wanted one. They were always the Cadillac of water guns. I, ha I had a few... I wish I still kept them. I know I like try and go down the aisles now. And I'm like, man, did Super Soakers get really tiny or did I get really big? I think it's a little of both. I had one, I swear to God. I, I hope it's in here somewhere. It was the one. It had like six rotating barrels. It was basically a Gatling gun for water and it was the coolest thing. Also the 50 or the only 
ultimate the 200. Get the 200 if you're awesome. Thanks. Now worries on the crocodile dentist. I'll fix that small <laughs> you crocodile on the crocodile dentist. Crocodile dentist. Just grab and pull this. Well, you know, Matt couldn't be here with me, but I'm glad he's here in spirit as the crocodile dentist. This was his first job before he got into doing comic books, don't you know? What a mouthful! I'm the crocodile dentist. Crocodile dentist. The game's crocodile dentist. Take turns pulling teeth, but don't pull the wrong one, or he'll snap and you're out. Man, do they still make, like, crazy kids games like this anymore? Like, I remember you had your hunky, uh, what is it, your Hungry Hungry Hippos and your Pop-Up Pirate and everything. Are these still things now, or do kids just have apps now? This is, this is what we had before apps, kids. Also, clearly this is for the kids in Florida, isn't it? Just put your, just put your hands right in a crocodile's mouth. Nothing, nothing can ever go wrong. Yeah, Operation. Totally amazing, Spider-Man. That's kind of the one that, uh, started all. Don't Wake Daddy was tight. Oh, is that a thing? Don't Wake Daddy. Okay, I might have to... Once we do 90s, I might have to move up to the 2000s and then to modern times is what we might have to do. Literally a... Dog crap. Really, Super Dandy? That's a game. Dog crap. Holy shit. Also, I realize I'm touching my face a lot, but that's just because I put uh, stuff on it before. Not supposed to be uh, touching your face. We are in a pandemic, don't you know? Let's let's see what else we got with the crocodile dentist. I did have mouse trap. Mouse trap was good. Oh, that poor crocodile dental isn't covered in his job. He's never gonna be able to get those replaced. Yeah, Florida man's kids do love this game, Crusader Con, no doubt about it. Right from the pet shop, I knew Barbie was the one for me. Oh, here's She's Barbie, Barbie, of course. And I'm Ginger. She grooms me every day. Then we're off to play. Man, Barbie's had a lot of jobs, hasn't she? She's been a nurse, a pilot, a dog walker. What kind of jobs hasn't she had? Hey, Pastor, we're just watching some 90s toy commercials and poking fun at them. <laughs> She's Barbie. And I'm Ginger. Here, girl. <laughs> Go for a walk? That's what I... You know what's really sad about this Barbie's dog, Ginger, if this was the 1990s, that dog certainly didn't make it that long. That dog had to be put down a while ago, I'm sure. Aww. Aw, poor Ginger. I love to hear. Let's put it in here. Look at him go. Together forever. She's Barbie. It's a hell of an earworm of a song, though. What did I tell ya? Batteries not included. Spay and new your pets, everyone. Oh, it's going good. Thanks for asking. <laughs> oh man. Hey man, get portable. This this is a '90s problem. Remember when you couldn't bring games everywhere you went? When we dreamed of being able to play games, the best you could have is a Game Boy, maybe with like two double A's if you were lucky. Hello, Jaden. Welcome. Man, this one really takes me back. Get a Game Gear Supersonic Sports Pack. A color oh color shit, a Game Gear, man. Whoa, whoa. Calm down now with the Game Gear. Man, remember when Sega made consoles and not just, you know, published Yakuza games and Sonic games? Man, this is a blast from the past. Portable Game Gear, carrying case, and two hit games. Two Sonic hit two. games. And the Majors Pro Baseball. Whoa, you can save 50 bucks. That had like maybe, what, 30 minutes of battery on that? Makes it. Coffee? Tea? Sega! Whoa! Sega loved to freak us the fuck out in their commercials, didn't they? Ah, oh, well, thank you, Pastor. I appreciate that. Again, as I mentioned before at the top of the show, any donations that I do get either here or maybe when I upload this later on the channel because there's not going to be any new comics next week so I can use all the content I can get is going to be going directly into Capes and Quest, my D&D show season two. I want to host the show somewhere else. I want to get some new merch made and I want to actually pay uh, Thorgy, Kirk, and Josh for showing up because I know they're probably hard up for funds right now too. So, you know... Yeah, the Sega Scream was fun, Party Pug, no doubt about it. Now, what do we got after that? Oh, shit, Light Bright. I never had Light Bright. I never even knew anyone who had Light Bright. Oh, thank you, uh, Don Shea. I appreciate that. And follow the patterns. It's easy to make beautiful pictures with Light Bright. And thank you for following, too, Sam is the man. Refills, like Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Tailspin. Oh, Tailspin. That was pretty cool. Man, Disney got on top of all of this stuff even back then before they started taking over all the cinematic universes. They took over Lightbright. 
Hopefully I can get that up, Crusader Con, because obviously, you know, they're doing a lot of stuff, uh, YouTube right now, to downgrade video uploads, and I'm not too sure about copyright. If Twitch doesn't ding me, then I'll definitely put it up on the channel. Yeah, Lightbright Sober Hippie uh, stuck around for a bit, because, yeah, I can remember these commercials late into the 2000s, too, actually. And the Little Mermaid. Light, 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 light. Turn on the magic of shining light. Light. Man, we, in an age before apps and the internet, kids were so much easier pleased, you know? Hey, just play with colored lights, kids. Isn't this exciting? You can make the fun yourself. I wonder if all the kids who are really into Light Bright, if they went on to get really into, like, Minecraft and shit. Because I guess it is all just creativity. When you break it down. Light Bright from Milton Bradley. The world is your arcade when you take... Oh, yeah, Nerf. Fucking nerf was so cool. Yeah. Shoot your friends. This was basically just LARPing in its earliest forms. We can all agree, though, nerf was friggin' awesome and the design work was great, but the worst problem with nerf is that you would lose the little darts and then you would never find them again. So you would basically just have a cool-looking gun with nothing attached to it. Yeah, we called it the imagination, if only... <laughs> Oh, uh, man, I had so many big-ass Nerf guns, and I swear I lost every single dart from them. Yeah, or you'll poke your eye out. Man, I remember whole Nerf wars with my friends. That stuff was so much fun. You see the things they have now. Uh, what is it? People who are, like, really into modding their Nerf guns and everything and putting, like, CO2 canisters and everything in it. Uh, the Modern Rogue with uh, Jason Murphy and... Uh, Brian, his last name escapes me at the moment. They did a whole video on Nerf gun modding culture that was pretty hip as hell. Yeah, a hard no guns toys to kid. Yeah, my uh, my grandma was like that sober hippie. I would always get them, but I'd never be allowed to bring them around her, which is fine. Yeah, now they got mini guns. Secret shot and let the secret out. I guess too the problem with Nerf guns too and them looking too real is that too many kids got shot unnecessarily. I'm sure. It's nerf or nothing. It's nerf or nothing. What a great tagline. It's nerf or nothing. And their names were great too. Totally focused group so every little boy would want one. The secret shot. The rip saw. And just the crossbow. That one was less creative. You can have lots of high-tech fun with Tiger's Talk Boy tape recorder. Oh, a talk boy. drooling on me. Hey, look, it's that thing that got uh, Bart Simpson in trouble when he fell down the well, remember? It even has speed control. Hi. This, this was a toy back then, everyone, where you could record your own voice and screw around with it. You know, back in the day before every phone had a recording setting on it. This, this was considered a toy, which, I mean, I guess most smartphones are considered toys for kids anyway, so I don't know. They did make the talk boy look great. It's, you know, it's how you do a good commercial. The ultimate prank toy. Got Bart Simpson in so much trouble. Kids were home early. That's right, Home Alone. Home Alone 2, that's right. It was a huge part of that. Hi, kids. We're home early. That was believable. That's my favorite bit about the talk boy. not included. There she goes again. Once that chicken starts laying eggs, there's just no stopping her. Chicken chickens is the name of the spiel exciting game. Right. Here we go, yet again, another animal-based toy that had a million pieces. And each time she lays an egg, try to catch it in your cart. Yeah. You try and catch the egg in your cart and also try and not stomp your chicks to death by accident, which is totally a thing that happens in the poultry industry. No, really, that's the thing that happens in the poultry industry they don't tell you about. Got to time it just right. Talk about scrambled eggs. Chicken, chicken, the 90s really did love animals. Be the first to get four eggs in. So it's basically reverse hungry, hungry hippos. From Sony's PlayStation come the greatest hits. Oh. Oil but the soft sounds of swarm in this aisle. PlayStation, hell yeah. Oh, this takes me back. Oh, Twisted Metal, hell yeah. All for just $24.99 each, but wait. There's more. That's right, the place. The saddest thing about this is remember when you could buy a video game for $24.99? 
American, a new video game? <laughs> You're lucky nowadays if you don't spend $100 on a new video game. Christ almighty. Man, truth be told, you don't even really see big console commercials like this anymore. Y you might get, like, one for an Uncharted or a Grand Theft Auto or a game that was going to sell a bunch anyway. I feel like the game companies realize that they got those who they got by the short and curlies. Man, this one takes me back, the original PlayStation. PlayStation is a mere 149 Yeah, no tech and no buy. Like Crash Bandicoot and Jet Moto. For just $49.99 and less. I guess PlayStation still does kind of do their classic thing now, but it's on the PlayStation Store. Yeah, when the Canadian dollar was better than the American dollar, yeah. That short time. Oh, Micro Machines Guy! Is he still alive, Micro Machines Guy? I like that guy. Oh, man, you know, you, you mentioned Spyro there, Amazing Sp uh, Spider-Man. Spyro was the first PlayStation game I ever bought with my own money. That was like uh, like my summer job money. I bought Spyro. Yes, that's how old I am. I was never much for toy cars. I guess it's because I'm, like, not a toy guy in real life. My dad always tried to get me into toy cars, and I was just like, nah, man, do they do they transform into a robot? Can I put the cars together, and do they form a bigger robot? Nah. Also, ooh, ooh, just looking, just looking at this scene right here I paused on. Oh, my. I don't even know what this product is yet, and already I'm feeling a lot of cultural appropriation going on. Also, thank you, because I just received 100 messages today, according to Restream. Be in the slip and slide tribe, then go through the geyser. The slip and slide tribe, you know, they, they were the last of their tribe, the slip and slide tribe, you know, they got put on reserves, though I hear they have very nice casinos. Slide in and slam that geyser! Slam it! You're already wet, but slam it and get more wet! you can make explode! What do you say, Big Chief Danny? Big Chief Danny say... <laughs> oh, that's nice. The chubby kid got to have fun, too. I was that kid. I, I, I feel a great kinship with Chief Danny, not gonna lie. Very little to say about the Disney thing. All I can think is like, man, these toys are probably huge collector's items right now. Probably sell those on eBay for a lot. Also, I was worried, is that couple seconds of Disney footage going to get me in trouble when I re-upload this later? I hope not. Two outfits? That's like one plus another one. The electronic game with the talking phone. To win, call guys, get clues, figure out which guy really likes you. He's not wearing a hat. Bye, guys. What do you say? I, I got very little to say on this one. I, I, again, I'm doing what I always did when Girls Twice commercials came out. I always just tuned out. Man, I, I wish we had some more women in the chat so we could get the female perspective on some of these, because I got, I, I got nothing. <laughs> My secret, huh? <laughs> He's not at the beach. See you later. Guys. <laughs> Because, you know, boys like weapons and slip and slides and, you know, things that are fun like talk boys and girls like phones. Yeah, my man! You're right. I really like you. Yes! <laughs> Dream phone. It's I true, yeah. Old Jetfires did sell for a lot of money. Oh, Pogs. Remember Alf? He's back now in Pog form. I did have a lot of Pogs. Bogs, 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 bogs. <laughs> They're doing shockingly little to sell these pogs, just yelling at you and saying, Yo, pogs, motherfucker, get it. <laughs> oh, it's a um papa mau mau, but set to pogs. Damn. Yeah, holy shit, pogs. I had so many goddamn pogs. And I also did hate them as well, Super Dandy. It's like we all it's like we all got a weird brain disease. In the 90s, we collected pogs and we didn't know why. And pogs instantly became useless. Now, now is it like the thing about pogs that they were like originally based on like Hawaiian slammers, which like is a thing culturally? 
that got turned into pogs and like the original person who came it up didn't get or came up with the idea never got it yes yeah, surfing bird which yes yeah, said to basically the exact same tune we haven't seen any slime yet amazing spider-man but there's time i'm sure there'll be some slime in here Don't you love they keep doing the flashing epileptic thing there like they're trying to brainwash you? Pogs, you must have pogs. Pogs for everyone. Pogs for days. Pogs were Pokemon, but they were useless. Man, uh, I had Pokemon pogs. Those were the pogs that I had because I loved Pokemon so much. Naturally, I needed pogs of it. If you loved a thing, there's pogs of it. Oh, those games were such bullshit, those Tiger handheld things. You would always get them from an older family member, and it always sucked. You always had just like a couple frames, and they're like, no, we promise it's a real video game. Look, we put it in this thing. It's got Double Dragon and Mario. God damn, I hated these things so much. Everything wasn't better in the 90s. Sometimes you had shit like these Tiger Electronics. Fake ass Game Boys. Games like Double Dragon. Oh, it's, it's fun. Look how fun it is. To defeat the big boss and save Marion to win. It's not also, fun. Coming soon from Tiger, Karnoff, Gauntlet, Jordan Bird, Simon's Quest, and more. <laughs> Jordan versus Bird. Man, Michael Jordan really was everywhere in the 1990s. Also, Simon's Quest. Yeah, I heard that too. Tiger's making a comeback. What is Tiger even doing these days? I'm pretty sure I had the X-Men game too, Vastiel, actually. Well, there you go. Connect 4. Connect 4 is legitimately a classic. You can't mess with Connect 4 because it's just friggin' tic-tac-toe. One more. Too late, Joe. Pretty sneaky, sis. I do love that they're trying to make it so exciting with these little animated checker characters, even though it's like, come on, man, it's friggin' tic tac toe. It's only so exciting. Go for it. Go for it. It's the Radio control fire truck that's oh. fun. Introducing the radio controlled bubble fire truck, and look who's driving. Yeah, a fire truck that shoots bubbles behind it, you know, like fire trucks do. The new easy to drive RC bubble fire truck from Tyco Preschool. Kids make it. I mean, it's a toddler's oh, toy. What do you want? <laughs> All right, here we go. Finally, an actual portable console that makes sense. Now everyone's getting in on the action of Game Boy. You get portable excitement, stereo action, play dozens of games like... It's true, actually. You know, a lot of adults did actually get into gaming via the Game Boy if they did have big, long commutes. I knew many people, uh, what is it, above the age of 40 who played it because they loved Tetris and shit. The mind-boggling Tetris, Dennis and God. And they're selling it with Tetris. Let you challenge a friend. Oh, it's man, like remember God. those chords? Oh, man, that takes me back to the schoolyard trading Pokemon with them cords. I did have a Game Boy Advance. I had, like, the lime green regular Game Boy. I had, like, the gunmetal gray Game Boy Advance, and then that was the last Nintendo console I had until my Switch just now. Play for grown Game Boy for yeah, it Nintendo. didn't help. It launched Pokemon now Green. Now you with power. Portable power. Oh, little Dracula. Man, you gotta love all these toy lines that they tried so hard to launch and that are now pretty much entirely forgotten in this day and age. Yeah, moms loved the Game Boy. You're right, Super Dandy. Mine always took my Game Boy because, again, it had Tetris and she loved some Tetris. Friends like I skipped the GameCube, I skipped the Wii, I skipped the Wii U, I went directly to Switch. And he certainly doesn't frighten I mean, these ones definitely have cool designs. So 
there was definitely a thing in the 90s, too, when it came to making toys and products and everything. It's like, you know, let's make the grossest thing possible. I feel grossness in action figures has kind of fallen by the wayside. Gross was fun. Just like you. From DreamWorks. Really? Really? Little Dracula was DreamWorks? Holy shit, I did not know that. Wow. They've come a long way, haven't they? Go check out a pretty new Porsche and then you'll know when it's got the coolest stickers that you've ever seen. Hey kids, enjoy Barbie's Porsche because it's the only Porsche you're probably going to be able to afford. <laughs> the Barbie Porsche is a beach machine. Ooh, perfect. Barbie goes shopping for something new. Trendy... Hey, you got a beautiful Porsche car. I don't know, let's put some fucking stickers on it and shit. Also, don't do that to your parents' actual porch, or you're probably gonna catch a fucking beating, kids. Is hot too. Look at this this is setting up very unrealistic expectations on how to take care of a luxury car, kids. Barbie Porsche car with headlights and fun stickers. You put it together. Dolls, fashions, and batteries not included. Batteries never included in anything. Never were batteries included. Got my milk. Got my cookies. Got my Viewmaster. Oh man, the Viewmaster. I had the Viewmaster too. It seemed so cool at the time, but looking back on it, how lame. It's a slideshow you make yourself with the most terrible visor you put on your head. Foster the Lion King. Kids take 3D Viewmaster everywhere. Watching the light and the dark with the lighted viewer. It's Simba and Nala. The hey, it's scenes from that viewers. movie I like. Jumping to a whole new beat. It's the Play Doh Make a Meal Diner. I never had much Play Doh growing up. My parents were very anti Play Doh, and I guess I can't blame them. Knowing me, I probably would have been the type of kid who wanted to try and eat some Play Doh. If they didn't want me to eat it, why did they make it look delicious? That's my question. Maybe less kids would eat Play Doh if they stopped trying to make it look so delicious. Oh, Batman, fuck yeah. And now you can bring the action home. Batman, ha ha, you missed. Yeah, but I only missed once. I'ma get you, Jack Nicholson. Oh look, Bob, Bob, his henchman Bob was there. Did you see that? You could get the Bob figure. Just watch if you can. You won't be alone for long. And in the I'm pretty sure I had this Batman figure, actually. It didn't have the cape, though, because again, you would always lose the cape. Sold separately from Toy Biz. Yeah. Connects. Oh, yeah, Connects. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember in grade school, they had a bunch of these. But you could never build anything as cool as this, which was always the shame. They always made it look so cool in the commercial, but you would never be able to make it as cool in real life. Connects, just fancy ass Lego. Connects. The new snap together color coded construction set. Man, I haven't thought about connects in years. Oh, we get two connects commercials back to back. Is it isn't connects like the precursor to Bionicle and stuff? Cause I had like one Bionicle and I remember it like snapped together very similarly to this. Again, I wonder if the people who loved Kinex growing up got really into Minecraft, because it's basically the same deal. Kinex, the new snap -together, color -coded okay, yeah, it did have similar parts, right? I'm not just insane. Twister, again, classic. Yeah, the, the funny thing about Twister is there's like, oh, you know, it's a fun game for the whole family, and yet I felt in my entire lifetime, Twister always kind of had a sexual undercurrent to it, like, oh yeah, play Twister with people you like, you know. No, unfortunately, Donna Shea, I have no emojis, that's something I gotta work on. Ooh, a digital camera, oh, without film. Jeez, this was considered a toy back in the day, wow. In the day before phones when everything was digital. How crappy must have those photos been? Man, man, I, I wish I knew someone who had these. Yeah, th yeah, I know, a lot of my favorite people all have, uh, what is it, uh... 
friggin' emojis, but I don't. That's something I'll need to commission. I'll need to get someone to draw me one just for said purposes. Exactly, Party Pug, exactly. Only with people you like, or else it would get really weird really quick. You can make your own Whoa, what digital camera? The, the, the fact that they're selling that it was a digital camera and came with a CD-ROM really lets you know what time period we were at that everyone else was still shooting on film. Good, Winford. Ooh, Mario 64. Arguably one of the most beloved games of its time, am I right? People can still hear me, right? Yeah, the 90s did love CDs. I remember how hard it was for me when I had to finally get rid of my damn CDs. Because I was so into them. Probably one of the most re-released and emulated games, too. Super Mario 64. Man, back when they were really trying to sell those. <laughs> the the Kawasaki Ninja, the kids are all wearing headbands and riding uh, ATVs, you know, like the ancient Japanese ninjas did. <laughs> Enemies by which we mean neighborhood cats. Yeah, take that, cats. I didn't have a Kawasaki Ninja ATV, but my grandparents did get me, like, a, what is it, like, one of those little engine, like, truck things. Like, basically the same deal, but it was meant to be, like, a Jeep and everything. Instantly crashed it because I'm a terrible driver. In fact, I wonder if the reason I didn't learn to drive much later in life is because this thing set up unrealistic expectations for me. <laughs> Yeah, they're cool at first until the kids drive it into a tree and flip over. They don't still make these anymore. I feel this is another thing that fell by the wayside, yes. It's balloon magic. It's amazing elastic plastic. Oh. Now ordinary balloons go pop, but elastic plastic balloons do not. Say what? Just roll stick and blow for fun balloons filled with air. Even what? A big what space bear. age sorcery is this? That couldn't possibly have worked. Oh, Mr. Friggin' Bucket, alright. I mean, come on. I, Mr. Bucket, put put your balls in the top. I mean, come on. This is too easy for a riff. What am I? What am I? A guy who goes after low-hanging fruit? And Mr. Bucket is most definitely a low-hanging fruit. The game's Mr. Bucket. The first to get their balls into Mr. Bucket wins, but look out! The first to get their balls into Mr. Bucket. I, do, I don't even need to make a joke. That that just is the joke right there. Because the balls will pop out of his mouth. I'm Mr. Bucket. The balls pop out of my mouth. I'm Mr. Bucket. A ball is what I'm about. I'm Mr. Bucket. No one, no one had any problem with this in all the focus groups. Mr. Bucket was totally fine. Yeah, I'm shocked we haven't gotten a Power Rangers Your sister Rangers gave you the mumps. Your brother gave you the flu. Your best friend gave you chicken pox. It's payback time. Uh -huh. With help from Dr. Mario. Go head to head. A lot of, a lot of Nintendo in here. Game Boy. Then contaminate, exterminate, and spread the viruses with your score. Uh, do not listen to Dr. Mario, everyone, in spreading viruses. We are in an era of pandemic right now. Don't, don't listen to Dr. Mario. He's a hack fraud. <laughs> You infect your opponent, make him sweat, run a fever, get the chills. Oh, no. <laughs> Social distance and stay inside. <laughs> Yo, with two players, it's germ warfare. Can I fight? N no to germ warfare. Bad, bad, Dr. Mario. <laughs> this was clearly, <laughs> clearly before its time. Aged poorly, Dr. Mario has. Sure. You know, it's really easy to make fun of Cabbage Patch Kids, too, but truth be told, people made a ton of money off Cabbage Patch Kids. They were, like, one of the first big collectible toys and one of the major reasons why eBay is what it is, if you didn't know. Cabbage Patch Kids, they love to pose. 
Yeah, you're right. We should uh, yank Dr. Mario's medical license. Now you can pose Cabbage Patch Kids in lots of different ways. Oh, you can pose your Cabbage Patch Kids. Holy crap. My mom had one, too. I think every mom had a Cabbage Patch Kid. Xavier Roberts Cabbage Patch Kids, each sold separately with birth certificate. Well, I didn't know Xavier Roberts got his name attached to every Cabbage Patch Kid. That's pretty cool. That's like a Broken Lizards Club Dread or an M. Night Shyamalan film. There are lots of teddy bears, but only there one is. Teddy Ruxpin. Oh, no, Ruxpin. My name is Teddy Ruxpin. And I'm much scarier than I should be. Is what I'd like to be. No, no, he's not, kid. Look, just let technology raise your children, is all we're saying. Pawn them off on old Teddy Ruxpin. Everything was always sold separately. I mean, yeah, Yahtzee is a fun game and everything, but man, they are really going overboard to sell Yahtzee. Wow, these people are just gacked up on Yahtzee, everybody. Fuck Yahtzee, man. Mm. I don't think I've ever been that excited playing anything. <laughs> Sam mentions uh, the Garbage Pail Kids. I'm shocked we haven't seen anything for them yet. And also, there's like a 30-year documentary of the Garbage Pail Kids that I actually just downloaded. Now, there's new Mickey Mouse Yahtzee, your child's first yet. Mickey Mouse Yahtzee, man. Again, even, even back then, Disney was putting their stamp on everything. Oh, Street Sharks, hell yeah. I totally had Ripster, I totally had the blue one. And it was super cool, but I wanted Slamu and I wanted all the other ones. You know, Sal and I argue all the time because he's, you know, like a dyed-in-the-wool Ninja Turtles fan because he's like a couple years older than me and everything. But because I'm a couple years younger, I'm like, nah, man, you know, Ninja Turtles, that's, you know, that's old stuff, man. You know, I'm here in the new stuff that will be here forever like Street Sharks. <laughs> fighting to stop the evil Dr. Peronoid from taking over the world. They fight, they bite, they kick some serious men. Now blast into action with the new shark cruiser. Yeah, look at the shark. Look how over-designed and awesome the shark cruiser is. Oh, man. Again, check, check eBay. See how much that's worth. It's either worth a lot of money or it's worth no money right now. How many of these do you think are buried in sandboxes all over the world, too? Exactly, Super Dandy. How have they not tried to reboot Street Sharks into every anything? I mean, probably because it was a ripoff of TMNT, and TMNT didn't even do that good, so that's probably why. You know what it needs to be? It needs to be a series of 11-minute shorts on Cartoon Network is what it needs to be. I don't even know who owns the rights to Street Sharks anymore, man. Yeah, Capes and Quest Season 2. That's what we're raising the money for, everybody. That's that's where it all goes. With monster fighting power and fan action traction. Oh, Finn Action Traction. Dude, did you see the, the Monster Truck Ada guy? The Monster Truck Ada guy. Can't make this shit up, man. Millions of dollars. Why didn't this make millions of dollars? Shark Cruiser vehicle, each sold separately. Shark Cruiser, the ultimate... Can you really? A set of six street sharks uh, for 40 bucks on eBay. Man, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic right about now, <laughs> I could go for some street sharks. I don't know what I would do with them. M maybe my desk in front of me, I'd set up a shelf just for street sharks. <laughs> no one could see them, but I'd see them. I No, I have not seen Betty Spaghetti. Uh -huh. You like hair, don't you, girls? What if the kids made the toys? Would they worry about budgets or I, the bottom line? I don't know. You're asking a lot of me, the ladies. They might make a talking bank. It's a secret code. For real? Really? And save their penny, nickel. I sincerely doubt if you let kids make their own toy, they would make a talking bank. I call tons of bullshit on this, lady. I don't even like going to the bank, and I'm an adult. Well, something near an adult, but you know. For a rainy day, 
Imagine. making it rain. Is there a place kids make the toys? Let's just say at Play School we couldn't make our Saving Sounds Bank without them. Play School. That's a weird toy. And now, now they're ringing around the rosy like a weird cult. Teaching kids to be consumers at a young age. To measure your self-worth in your bank account. Not me, man. I choose to live differently. I'm a rebel. I choose street sharks. You know, things that matter. Sorry. Sorry. Never played Sorry. Yeah, I guess that's what preschool was trying to do. Trying to make learning fun, question mark. The game of Sorry. Oh, Furby. You know, Furby was the first, like, real fad where I'm like, nah, nah, I want no part of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, Lich Lord Chris. I don't need to play the board game, sorry. I'm Canadian. I'm already an expert at it, eh? Yeah, I had no part of the Furby, and I was happy about it. That was the first thing where I'm like, I don't, I, I don't get it. They're not cool. They don't form a Megazord. They don't have guns. Young Joel was just like, nah, nah, dog. More There's a Spider-Man version of Sorry? Holy crap. Well, okay, maybe I would have played it if it was Spider-Man Sorry. <laughs> How many, like, Furbies do you think are in landfills right now? I feel that, like, Pet Rock and all these other fad things that people just throw away in mass. Yeah, Furbies and Beanie Babies, exactly. <laughs> Separately. Batteries not included. Man, but clearly they were popular. Like, the guy who invented the Furby, does he have, like, a cartel mansion and a golden toilet where he wipes with hundreds? Because, I mean, you'd think so, right? Because that had to make a ridiculous amount of money. They had so many, like, rip-off and counterfeit Furbies. That's how popular Furby was at the time. Looking back on it, man, it's just like, wow. Oh, skip it! They did make Skip It look pretty awesome, though. I'm not going to lie. Because it's basically just a ball and chain you wear on your foot. Also, something that they were totally cool selling to to girls and boys, but you didn't get much crossover up at the time. There's a, there's a great Dungeons & Dragons podcast out there uh, done by Anthony Birch and Freddie Wong and a bunch of other funny people. It's called uh, Dungeons & Daddies. The joke is, is that instead of playing like orcs and elves and dwarves, they play like suburban dads from our world transported to a fantasy world. And I shit you not, I think it might be Freddie Wong's character. I'm not sure, but he wanted like a skip it. Or no, sorry, it was Beth May's character who wanted to skip it as a weapon for their character. So the guy had to actually sit down and, you know, stat a skip it. And that's one of the funniest things. And good fun from Tiger Toy. The new farthest flying Vortex Mega Flux. I'm John. Eh, sports, we can fix this. No way. John Elway, I have you on my wallet, John Elway. What would John Elway do? I said a word. Seriously, I know nothing about sports. I only know John Elway is really popular, and I only know John Elway even more so from South Park jokes about John Elway. World record by throwing the Vortex football over 90 yards. I'm not John Elway. No, you're but not I'm John Elway. Smash John Elway's but you could tell me you're John Elway, and I wouldn't know. A new record over 100 yards. Awesome throw. It's an awesome ball. If you want to smash I just, your I have, it's, it's a ball, man. I have nothing to say about it. Mega flight. You're selling me a ball. Help! Listen, Stop! Stop, evildoers! Introducing Super Stretching Superhero Stretch Armstrong! Wow. Dolph Lundgren, life hit this dude a hard. For real, man. You know, I, I like to talk shit about Stretch Armstrong as, like, another forgotten brand, but didn't Stretch Armstrong get, like, a Netflix cartoon not too long ago where he was ironically also a superhero? Um, yes, Stretch Armstrong, now stretching fun farther than ever before. It was corn syrup. He was filled with corn syrup. That's how he was able to do that. He bends, he stretches, even ties and knots, but always returns to his original shape. Eh, not always, because eventually they would run out of corn syrup and he'd be really brittle and shitty and fall to pieces. 
Actually, I think it was, what is it, Robot Chicken did a great bit about that, where if you were smart and you knew a guy who knew a guy, you could literally, like, shoot more corn syrup into him, give him, like, a corn syrup transplant, and make him last a little longer. How does he do that? <laughs> yeah, you, 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 got the, you got the entire thing behind this, Super Dandy. That's exactly what this is. Joel shit posts old commercials. He's been doing that since he was a kid. <laughs> Stretch Armstrong from Cap... Ooh, that's a jaw. Ooh, that is the physique Bre uh, Brock Lesnar has right now. Brock Lesnar is slowly but surely turning into a Stretch Armstrong. Does he have, like, 600 teeth? What the hell? Also, too, because I'm sure someone in the comments will say it, can, can Stretch Armstrong stretch every part of his body? I'm just saying. I'm sure you thought it. Let's Boys, move on. Who else? Two-sided Magna Doodle. Where what you do on one side oh. shows up on the other. And two can doodle at the That's same time. That's kind of cool, I guess. Undoodle it here and undoodle there. Two-sided Magna Doodle from Tyco. Ooh, more PlayStation. Nice. Stores closed. Not for me, pal. You might say I'm Spyro's hot. Hey, star. Spyro. Spyro. Nice. That little dragon. The way he blows fire. Ah, shape first game I bought with my own money. So many nice memories. I am an anti-spiro activist. Genghis, come. What did you say? It's funny. This is a commercial all about Spyro, and yet the commercial does not star Spyro. It stars a sheep that Spyro had maimed in the game itself. That's a hell of a thing. Also, hey, thank you for following Young Wubbles. Just saw that. You're toast. Remember when they actually put, like, way more time and effort into video game commercials and they weren't just, like, sizzle reels and everything? I think the ideology changed is that they stopped selling them like toys and started selling them like movies because they knew that, you know, hey, lots of adults play and buy them, too. Man, I love that. That still takes me back. PlayStation. Another alligator. Wait, Gator Golf, that's that's just the same thing from Gator Dentist. They just changed it a little bit. Gator Golf, look if he great yeah. and playing a game of golf with the Gator. It's Gator Golf. Hit the ball in his mouth to <laughs> score, the Gator will toss it back out. Gator Golf, hit the ball in his mouth. It's an Gator earworm golf. of a song, I'm not gonna lie. Do you take a shot, Dad? Okay. You bet. <laughs> Oh, sure, that's fun now with Dad. Wait till he's had a couple, uh, scotch and sodas. It's like, I could get her golf good. I'll show you. I have not played the HD remasters of Spyro. I want to, though. I just haven't been able to make time for it on top of, like, the hundred other games I haven't finished yet. I used to make fun of people who didn't finish their video games. Now I've become that person. Gator, Gator golf. Oh. That looks fun. <laughs> Baby tumble. No, baby shouldn't tumble. That'll hurt baby's neck. No, baby tumbles. <laughs> no, I haven't finished Fallen Order yet. I am working on it, though. I also uh, just treated myself to a bunch of DLC because it was on sale for Vermintide. Don't don't tumble, baby, and don't shake baby, either. This, this all looks very dangerous for baby. This is sending all the wrong messages. I don't like this. Okay, let's talk about the phenomenon of horse girls for a second, because I think we can all agree on this. No matter where you were in the world, no matter where you went to school, we all knew at least one horse girl. That's the girl who was, like, super obsessed with horses. Maybe she rode them, maybe she didn't, but she was always drawn horses and had horses on her shirts and everything and was just, like, super into horses. I often wonder, you know, whatever happened to those ho horse girls later on in life. There's a great show on Cartoon Network right now called Craig of the Creek, where they, you know, have, like, a bunch of different kid factions, and one of them is the Horse Girls. And I just thought that was so accurate. See, we all knew a Horse Girl. So this is just Horse Girl Barbie. Dolly Parton and Kevin Nash are getting really jealous of Barbie's fringe right now. Yeah, exactly. Horse girls are the car guys, just, you know, with the genders flipped around. You're absolutely right. No, I guess in New York it might be hard to come across horse girls, maybe because I lived in the country. Tina from Bob's Burgers, you're right, is basically a horse girl. There. Wow. Western fun Barbie and sun butter. What a gorgeous... <laughs> 
Western Fun Barbie, complete with six shooter. You know, for rustlers. Sunrunner. That's a pretty good name for a horse, actually, I'm not gonna lie. Barbie's got good taste. Is it me? Is it you? Who knows? Yes, Does your person wear a hat? No. Does your person have a beard? Uh huh. You're out of here. Did your person wear glasses? Yes. You're Sam. You win. Guess who? Game cards did not now, actually. Now, wasn't the thing about Guess Who that it didn't actually have uh, any black people in it? And that was like a big deal because if you put it in, you could easily win the game by racially profiling and be like, are you a black person? Then the game's over. But didn't they eventually change it in newer versions of Guess Who? Didn't they make it more ethnically diverse? Or am I just making this up? Is this like some Mandela effect shit that I only half remember? Craig the Creek is a good show. Oh, well, thank you, uh, my Lord Xavier. I appreciate that. Name my horse in Red Dead Tooth Nasher. That's a fun reference. I like that. Actually, <laughs> talk. I also never played Guess Who. Because well, Guess Who is basically just like a fancier version of 20 Questions, is all as it really is. Hurry, let's go. Meet 2XL. Oh, shit, these robots. I feel like they did a bunch of these in a row. There was the 2XL, there was the Awesomeo, there was a few others. Like, like little robots were like a big thing that they pushed for a little bit. I don't remember this one exactly, but I definitely had one of the later ones. That's true, true, is right. 2XL is full of fun questions and answers about animals, sports, monsters, even jokes. Why do you call two banana peels? So basically the Siri of his day. Who's the talking robot? Yeah, guess who is try not to generalize the game. Batteries not included. Additional tape sold separately. Oh man, he came with a tape. When your dad was your age, he had ants in the pants. He did? Now you've got it. Wow. Remember the fun of ants in the pants? No, I don't. I've Mine never heard of it until right now. Case. My last ants. Flip all your ants into wind. Yes. You've got ants in the pants. I do, Grandpa. I really do. And who could forget, don't spill. Okay, who was high when they came up with this? Ants in the pants. They they started with that phrase and then built a game around it. All the beans. Careful, Grandpa. <laughs> Okay, is that how you play Don't Spill the Beans? The only thing I knew about Don't Spill the Beans was a joke in King of the Hill where Bobby was shoving beans up his nose to try and win the game. Is that actually how Don't Spill the Beans is played? It's kind of like Jenga, but you're filling it up. On the fun of ants in the pants and Don't Spill the Beans, there's Cootie and Don't Break the Ice, too. Wait, 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 wait. So you had ants in the pants. You had Don't Spill the Beans. You already weren't feeling confident enough in ants in the pants that you had to also stick a commercial in for Don't Spill the Beans. But you have two very similar games as well. Jeez, guys, come on. Friggin', I, I, I know you got to diversify your portfolio, but, like, pick one thing and run with it. You're spreading yourself too thin. Yeah, none of these games Mighty do Max, sound fun. Mighty oh, Mighty Welcome Max. Man, I remember when Sal and I were talking about Mighty Max and how, like, the last episode of this show is a real head fuck, where it's like, oh, so did Max defeat the villain and, you know, was everything cool at the end? Nah, actually, it ended with, like, and the battle will rage on forever, just as it does in real life. Wow! Mighty Max! Smasher, get up! Your brain donor is here! Me Those aren't very good-looking toys. No way, slime face! Whoa! Watch out for that first. Step. Like Mighty Max was a pretty good looking Mighty show, Max but these toys look like they're really <laughs> cutting corners. Those were really popular too. They had like uh poly pockets for girls, and I forget what the boy equivalent was, because it wasn't marketed near as well as poly pockets. Yeah, exactly. Every one of these looks like SNL commercials. You're you're not lying. Where's the lie? Uh Greg Offerman, I see no lie in that statement. You can collect all his adventure sets, each sold separately, Mighty Max figure included, from Mattel. Yeah, that was popular, the, you know, carry your little toys around in a case and everything. That that really had its day, that came and went. Uh-huh. <laughs> for, uh, for what is it, for the young Tumblr artist in your life, you have these bears. Before you could put your artwork online, you drew it on a bear. Man, these girls went on to be sick-ass tattoo artists. They they were the ones that uh, gave The Undertaker the Sarah on his neck that he eventually had to take off. The best. I throw over my arms. It's Rosie on my 
just cause I'm the doodle bear. Also, setting it to, you know, I'm a rambler, I've been around, 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 around. The original doodle bear. I love to doodle and doodle and doodle. Man, you joke about that, my lord Xavier, but I bet that would be like a big deal. Okay, the science of that, I do remember this commercial, and the science of that always got me, that you had markers that you could draw on the bear, whatever they wanted, but that they always washed clean. I'm assuming that the ink would come off and mess up your other laundry, right? Or would you just have to do a special load for the bear itself? This always did my damn head in. You know, if you if you understand the chemistry, please, please do tell me. I'm the doodle bear. Doodle yeah, draw on your bear because you're too rich for paper. <laughs> yeah, get a honey back tattoo. Oh, my bear wants, uh, what is it, some tribal. My other bear wants that Goldberg tattoo that looks like barbed wire. <laughs> Yeah, The Wanderer, which, when I hear The Wanderer, I just cannot help and think, uh, Fallout. That's just how my brain is wired now. Comes in one of four different colors with washable doodle pans and tattoos. Each bear sold separately. And they actually sell them as tattoos, too. That's interesting. They sold tattoos to little girls, but not to little boys. That's very interesting. Because you think, like, the boy version of this would be very easy, because, again, it would be like, hey, do a skull and crossbones. Do a heart with mom and a dagger through it. Yeah, give your bear a tramp stamp. It's a butterfly. <laughs> oh no, this uh, this bear wanted a teardrop on its eye. Filled in or not filled in, I know what that means. What does 13 and a half in a motorcycle mean? Really? Motor? I don't remember these. Available only at Toys R Us. Call now. I don't remember that at all. Talk. Uh -uh. Talk. It's BB-8. I'll it's take Bugs Bunny talk. Ain't going to stink up. You guys are spout now. Now that's Bugs Bunny. Meep, meep. What's up? But that's not Mel Blanc. Clearly that was the guy they had in between doing the voices for Space Jam and everything is what that was. Also, I loved the Looney Tunes, but I had no Looney Tunes merchandise. Doc. New Bugs Bunny, Taz, Roadrunner, and Sylvester. They really talk. Yes, this is the Space Jam era. You're elected, you're the star today. Yeah, back when bullies would just take you're your shit. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me that the power of the Game Boy camera is so amazing it will turn your bully into a nice guy? I, actually, I just started watching The Tiger King. I got about 20 minutes into it. I am going to finish it at some point. I actually knew about Joe Exotic long before because I had uh, watched him when he showed up on, uh, what is it, running for office on last week tonight. Oh, and thank you too for following, MK Dragon. Appreciate it. Yeah, the, the bully still didn't give it back. He still got it in his hand. He's laughing. He's having fun. Oh, that's great. I'm going to love this thing I stole from you. Yeah, yeah. Hugging your bullies after all the shenanigans. Also, too, I like that, you know, he's a bully and he's the fat kid. Like, those things go hand in hand. You know, he's just lashing out because he's heavy. I also never got the Game Boy camera. Okay, first and foremost, that girl was way too old for him. Second off, you don't take pictures of someone without asking. That's just asking for trouble right there. In fact, in California, there's laws against that. And I'm really glad he just took a picture of her face. Because I don't know if my mind is filthy or if it's been ruined by watching too much Special Victims Unit. But I, I really thought he was going to do something else with that camera. Maybe I'm fucked in the head. I don't know. Yeah, take that, Dad. You don't have to be depressed anymore. Game Boy Camera is here. <laughs> Man, I want to live in the Game Boy Camera world where problems can be solved so easily. <laughs> hey, Dad, midlife crisis got you down. Don't worry. Here's the Game Boy Camera. <laughs> <laughs> Bop it, which, you know, is fun at first, but then ruins every, you know, uh, get-together when one of your friends gets way too freaking competitive and only wants to play the Bop It. Commands you obey. Game Boy Camera by Dick Wolf. <laughs> I'll write that. I'll write that pitch. I never had a Bop It, but a friend had a Bop It. He took it way too seriously. Yeah, Jody, they're cool. Oh, I vaguely remember these things too. Wild time, Wait, cool. They're 
They were called Scooshlings? Really? I don't even remember that Scooshlings. That's just not a good word. Scoosh. Scoosh. Not just regular Kooshlings, Wata. Soccer boppers, yeah. I always wanted soccer boppers. I never got a soccer bopper. My dad was like, look, if you just want to hit your friends, like get boxing gloves or some shit. He's a practical man, my father. What can I say? But I wanted to bop all night. I was a contender. I could have done it. Put your hand inside, get ready to have the time of your life. Soccer boppers. Yeah, punch your friends. What could possibly go wrong for your kitty fight clubs? Soccer boppers, more fun than the pillow fight. My big time toys. At least, at least they sold them both together. I could imagine in today's world, uh, what is it? You would have to buy each one separately. I bet they got deflated easily too. Concussion gloves, exactly. When your child oh yeah, here was the other hottest toy. I'm glad I just missed the Tickle Me Elmo craze. I was too old by the time that this had come out. But oh yeah, I remember like soccer moms like knocking the crap out of each other for Tickle Me Elmo. No way, mom. He was murdered by Colonel Mustard. I did love Clue, both the movie and the game. But again, I've always been a fan of crime fiction and cop show, so that's probably why I loved Clue so much. Really, is Elmo getting a talk show? Eh, it can't be worse than some of the other talk shows that are out right now. The movie is amazing, and the movie had different cuts with different endings that they sent to different theaters. Bigfoot! Man, I, again, like I said, I never really gave a shit about cars or monster trucks, but I always loved the Bigfoot and Truckosaurus commercials, because it was so in your face! And also, I enjoyed ascribing a characteristic to a truck. You know, I feel like I knew Bigfoot the monster truck. Hot Wheels! a Bigfoot for the Crunch Arena! Just crushing shit! Brutal bone crunching power! Completely crunched! No problem! Oh. oh, that's actually kind of creative. But what are they made of that they can just get crunched and put back together? Are they like tin foil? I don't know. I've read a little of the Dresden Files last time I was at the library. I was waiting on someone else and I picked it out and read it a little bit. It did seem like something I'd like. This is another thing about 90s toy commercials where it's like, hey girls, your brother definitely is sneaking into your room and definitely trying to read your diary, so you definitely have to buy our products to protect it. I never had a sister. I was an only child, but I imagine if I did, I would A, respect her privacy, and B, probably not give a shit what she was writing in her diary. I mean, I guess the idea is she writing about me, what she's saying about me, but again, I thought this was such a weird creation of commercials. And also, they left it where they could find it so they could try and crack the code. You know, things girls like. Oh, they got us by coming back. Oh. Yeah, exactly, Super Dandy. You get it. Unleash the Typhoon, the only 9.6 feet radio controlled hovercraft in the world. Really? Hovercraft blasts over the ground on a cushion of air. That's pretty dope, actually. Radio control, three powerful turbo motors for That is, okay, you know what? No, no lie, this is still pretty cool, actually. An actual hovercraft. I bet it doesn't work as shown, though. I bet it would sink. Typhoon and Mini Typhoon, the only 9.6 feet radio controlled hovercraft in the world from Tyco. Oh, a motorized pen. That doesn't seem near as fun as you're trying to make it. Oh, yeah, Crossfire. The children's Kumite. Two kids enter, one kid leaves in crossfire. 
I love it's not just that they're playing the game Crossfire, but they're all dressed like extras from Mad Max. They're all wearing tiny child-sized leather jackets. It surely couldn't have been nearly as fun as these commercials made it out to be. Beyblade before Beyblade, exactly. I played a lot of Beyblade, because you could actually do the thing they do in the show with Beyblade. Exactly, New Genesis, that pen looks like a pen that didn't work right. Matchbox. Oh, really? A brush tip marker? I couldn't get those anywhere. Oh, yeah, I remember these. Those did kind of look cool. Yeah, you know what kids love about cars? Washing them. Man, I, I always hated it when they tried to sell 3D glasses. My generation was the generation of let's get these stupid kids to buy 3D glasses, and they never worked. Bots Master, I'm looking at you. 3D time was a lie. Sorry, laser time. They didn't even call it 3D time. To make your own masterpieces and our amazing safety stencil cutter that cuts stencils out of regular paper but doesn't cut you. Of course they super didn't work. Also get a color workshop no, no wonder people my age, you know, late 20-somethings can't trust anyone. All of our toy and cartoons lie to us. We will also include two of our new body art blow pens and reusable stencils. Uh, again, look here. Hey, kids. Get into tattooing at a young age. That's so funny. Ages four and up. Get your sick tribal tats. Get, get your area code airbrushed across your stomach. Let everyone know what set you roll with. Also available for $14.99, our turbocharged foot pump kit with a, a foot pump. It literally is like a small time tattoo kit. Holy crap. Sorry, no COD. That reminds me of Christopher Titus, where he's like, yeah, when I was a kid, I painted flames on everything. Everyone in the neighborhood, for five bucks, I'll paint flames on it. Obey me, Wario. Okay, Wario. your master. Mario is your enemy. The okay. The imposter Wario has cast an evil spell over Mario. Yeah, everyone had that game on the first Game Boy. Don't let Mario reach the palace. This is the biggest, most dangerous, most challenging Game Boy adventure yet. Obey Wario. It was pretty advanced for the time. Don't fall under you know, it's funny, too, to see back in a time when Wario, when they were still trying to make Wario out to be, like, this big actual villain evil inverse of Mario. Now he's just, like, the joke guy who gets weird WarioWare games and, you know, uh, farts as his big finishing move. Hell of a thing, man. I, I do believe there's a trope for that early installment weirdness. Yeah, Wario's so much more of a joke character now. Mario's evil spell in Super Mario Land 2 on the Unkid Boy. <laughs> Man, that big gray brick, I tell you. Presenting the Fisher Price 3 in 1 tournament table. Breakfast is ready. One more ball, Mom. We're a simple game. Hey, look, kids got to learn how to pool shark eventually. We're giving them skills that, you know, they'll need. Oh, I do love table tennis. That is my game. I can't play real tennis. Obviously, being Canadian, table hockey, also pretty sweet. And glow-in-the-dark table hockey. Yeah, more threatened than Bowser Jr., no doubt. Well, we haven't quite gotten slime yet, but this is a little close to slime. Man, you know, to think if Flome had just stuck around in this internet age, we'd have a bunch of people making weird videos with their Flome. Exactly, it's it's just clay. We're trying to make clay more interesting. Comes in six colors, each sold separately. Flome shaper sold separately from Mattel. And yeah, and I bet half of this shit didn't work. You're right. Wanna play tag? You're it. Puppy loves chasing kitty. Birdie flies all around. Wanna see a great trick? Whoa. Monsters do the cutest tricks. <laughs> go, go, go. And bunnies love playing hide and seek. Carrots. Sure. Carrots are my favorite. With a little list pet, we do for you. Wow. The fun things that they can do. Yeah, no creepy crawlies yet. Yeah, where are the creepy crawls? I had the creepy crawly uh, set, but I didn't have the oven, so I just put it in the toaster oven and almost burnt the shit out of my hands. Yeah, Mighty Ducks! I had a Mighty Duck, too, you better believe. Man, I just love the balls of Mighty Ducks, where it's like, look, you know, we got this really popular sports movie. You know, what do we do with it? I know, we'll turn it into a Ninja Turtles clone, just shamelessly. Ducks rock. 
Yeah. Where's the Tim Curry figure? I want my Tim Curry. There's my Tim Curry action figure. <laughs> they're ducks and they're superheroes and they're hockey themed. Yeah, did you know the Mighty Ducks was an actual NHL logo? But did, they stopped calling them the Mighty Ducks, right, when uh, Disney stopped owning the team, right? They just became the Ducks. How big were Mighty Ducks in Canada? Honestly, about as big as they were anywhere else. The Mighty Ducks in general just weren't that popular. It's the Great Biscay Game. This was another popular thing in kids' toys. Hey, kids, how sadistic can you be to these uh, clay figures? There was this, and then there was like a whole line of crash test, uh, crash test dummy toys. Not the band, actual crash test dummies. Really, they still wear the jerseys on uh, throwback nights. Man, I might have to get one. Oh, no. Just around this, uh, friggin', what is it, Barbie beat Madonna into being a white blonde woman who thought she could rap to help further her career. Boom bop, you can rap a song! This Barbie's cool from Ooh. head to toes, cause she's got the most happening clothes. This bar so I'm the most Caucasian person possible, you know, I'm whiter than a snowman doing coke, you know, uh, what is it, in a snowstorm, and I still think this is the whitest thing I've ever seen. Barbie's the hottest, that's what I found, cause her boom bop plays a real rap sound. <laughs> Oh, a real rap you sound. Too, with rap and rock and Barbie. Man, it was really sad when rap and Barbie got involved in the whole, you know, uh, East versus West uh, rap battles there. You know, they still never uh, figured out whether or not she killed Tupac or not. Oh, she's got a whole crew. Not just rapping, rapping and rocking, because just rapping on its own is too dangerous. making a bed where the marbles go. This this was another big thing in the 90s, too. Let's take a toy we already have, in this case, marbles, and let's try and make it, like, you know, cooler and hipper. The classic childhood battles is two is not. Wow, that kid's got a rage problem. Yak back gives you the last word. Yak hey, back, someone mentioned yak back, back earlier. Here we go. We got a yak back. Yeah, Power Rangers. I remember this one. Yeah. Oh, and they all came together. Okay, so true story, uh, when they ran out of Japanese footage for the actual Power Rangers show and they couldn't uh, film all the Zords coming together, what they did is they literally just filmed the toys. They literally just filmed all the toys coming together. The ultimate battle yeah! Now available on home video. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, too hot to handle. I love this image. This kid just totally spent his house is destroyed because Power Rangers is so powerful and so amazing. It will literally blow your goddamn dick off. That's good marketing, everyone. That's good ass marketing right there. I never had the original set. I had a bunch of the ones that came later. So I had like Zeo and In Space. And uh, I think the last one I actually had was, like, the Quantasaurus, and that was, like, when I was probably too old to still be collecting Power Rangers stuff, but the Quantasaurus was so cool, because it had, like, a little wrist thing that you could actually control it with, and it walked, and it was this whole fucking thing, and I wish I still had it. I could talk about this shit forever, honestly. So, man, just people getting sprayed in their faces by liquid. Again, you, you, you have to wonder about the people who made these commercials and if they had ulterior motives. Splash up from Galoob, water not included. There's something new in Gotham City. It's Ooh, Batman. more Batman. Like you've never seen him before. Yeah, with an ugly gold costume and wings that don't look like wings. Figure I still check in on Power Rangers every so often to see what's going on. I know the new season is doing some cool shit with continuity and the Morphin Grid and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, 
flashy duds, Batman. My tech Very suit flashy. protects me. Even against this sludge, your poison can't hurt my tech shield suit. Bye, Batman. <laughs> Think again, Joker. <laughs> Bye, I'm Joker. I'm out of here. Hi, Batcopter. Fire! Get him! Ah, oh, where does it get these great... Yeah, I watched those uh, Power yeah, Rangers finish, histories, Joker. too. Those are pretty good. Tech shield Batman. Batcopter and Joker sold separately. Part of Batman, the Dark Knight Collection. Yeah. How did I make it big? I know how. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you made it big, Monopoly man. You stole the entire concept of your game from a woman who was actually trying to say something about, uh, what is it, the destructive nature of capitalism, but then your company bought it and turned it into the ultimate game, thereby commodifying it. To play the game, I buy real estate, hotels, That's true. That's the actual story of Monopoly, for those who didn't know. Like a teacher made it as a screed against predatory capitalism. And how, like, in the end, no one really wins. Dr. Dreadful here. And this is the Dr. Dreadful Drink Lab. Ooh. <laughs> Makes lots of gross things that taste great. Magically. Man, selling gross things to boys was such a huge thing in the 90s. Yo, this is so gross. You'll love it. I have not listened to the Power Rangers audio drama. Is it any good? Well, you're saying it's amazing. I might have to check it out then. Good and care for a putrid potion? No. Yeah, hey, kids, just drink random chemicals you put together. All these kids who had this toy, I bet, went on to start their own meth labs. Tasty. Here, have, a have you eaten this playset, my lord? Okay, do tell us, how did this shit taste? Because I need to know and we can't recreate it now. They did make the chemistry sets look super cool. Uh, I hope everyone who put money out for Comic-Cons gets their money back. Or at least eventually gets to go to the con. Me worm. <laughs> Ooh. Now Dr. Dreadful's grossest goodies. Yeah, Wars. yeah, these kids are gonna become reanimators. Drink lab makes carbs of gross things again and again. Batteries not included. <laughs> Batteries never included. Totally. <laughs> yeah, kids, be sure to drink weird potions that crazy old scientists gave you. What does it feel like to play Simon? <laughs> Simon Snow. It's a far out game, man. It's not for the faint of heart. Gotta match them colors and patterns. I love American Dad did a whole thing on Simon and just how it ensnared the whole family for an episode. Because you never want this game to beat you. You think like, oh, it's so simple, I got it. But then it actually gets quite difficult. Yeah. Introducing the next generation from Nintendo, New Super Mario World, created especially for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Cool. It's a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging, a bit more... Crazy, Again, bit never more really fun. had a, a Nintendo console, so never really got to play a lot of these. Yeah, exactly, the toy from Paranormal Activity. A bit more revolutionary, a bit more Mario. Man, I miss the times when, you know, all the console companies got more commercials out there, not like now. Now you're playing with power, superpower. That is a great tagline, playing with power. Don't under and do the chicken limbo. Chicken limbo. Don't, don't be limboing under chickens. That's a bad idea. Have you ever smelt a chicken farm? It's literally the worst. They have so much ammonia in them. But if you do... So you just took a regular game of Limbo and put some unnecessary chicken stuff on top of it. Also, I know that's supposed to be the chicken's tail, but it really looks like something else. I'm not gonna lie, as a big kid who loved pastries and shit, you know, I, I didn't want an Easy Bake Oven, but I wanted someone around me to get an Easy Bake Oven so I could have pastries. I wanted to know a girl who had one. Although, from what I understand, Easy Bake Oven stuff kind of sucked, because it was basically just a light bulb. Nothing ever cooked right. But they made it look good in the commercials, man. They made it look good. You can bring home the hey, when Toy Story was new. You know, I always thought these toys would be like cool collector's items attached to this movie, but then they kept making new movies and kept coming up with reasons to re-release them. I had that one. I, I had the Metal Buzz. I totally had that one. I had that one, but it annoyed me that he didn't look like the one in the movie. Oh yeah, they loved those mic accessories, didn't they? 
Starla's magic microphone. She says what you say in her own voice. Oh, sure. Today you're talking into Starla's magic microphone, but then tomorrow you're cutting the sickest mixtape of all time. Selling out of your trunk before you know it. You're selling out the Apollo Theater. I do remember uh, Lord Zerg, absolutely. Voiced by Newman in the actually pretty underrated cartoon series. Doctor, my belly aches. You've got Again, Operation, pretty solid game. You can't mess with it. It's a lot of fun. It's one of those easy to learn, hard to master type things. <laughs> Always got to collect your fee, everyone, because this is America and there is no such thing as socialized medicine. Oh, I'm really digging uh, Steven Universe this season. I, I, I would love to find a chance to talk about it, but I want to get a good co host involved. Oh, here we go. Here's Creepy Crawlies. Creepy Crawlies. Great theme song. So I had the Creepy Crawly set, but I didn't have the oven, so I literally put it in the toaster oven and almost burnt my fingerprints off. That was a hell of a day. No, you cannot eat the Creepy Crawlies, but they were brightly colored, so it's almost like you could. All right, so yes, Mighty Max was the boy version of Polly Pocket, but Mighty Max actually got more popular because it actually had some pretty good writing in the show. Okay, so legit true story. My best friend growing up was a guy named Austin, and he had like a really bad scar right down the middle of his like uh, like palate, and I always wonder what the hell was about that. Apparently, his sister threw a Polly Pocket at him when they were fighting. It clamped down, and now he has a scar for the rest of his life because of one of these things. So these things are like death traps. When you got a snap of foe, it's basically just a bear trap. Ah, this was the Game Boy I had. I had the lime green one. That was the one I had. So many good memories on that thing. So much Pokemon Gold. Pokemon Gold, uh, Golden Sun. Uh, I, I guess that first Kingdom Hearts game. I'm trying to think of, you know, ones I had on that system. I didn't have a lot of Game Boy games. I probably had a Yu-Gi-Oh! or something on there at some Beautiful. point, too. Game Boy Color. Get into it. Get into it. Whoa. I do not know what you are, sir, but I do not like you. You don't say. I say no to Jibber Jabber. That is a creepy pasta toy just waiting to happen. That's the next Annabelle creation, is this thing. Nope, nope, yeah, need an adult. No, none of that, none of Jibba Jabba. Oh yeah, that was like the Castle Grayskull for girls. You had to get the Barbie's dream house. Again, setting unrealistic expectations for young women about home ownership. <laughs> Come on, in this day and age, Barbie wouldn't be able to own a home. She'd be lucky to be able to rent. Where's Where's Barbie's Airbnb experience where you have to, you know, rent out the top loft of your place to travelers just to make it? Uh huh. <laughs> but you know, also be sure take care of your real pets. Mouse trap is genuinely pretty cool, which probably explains why I love the Saw movies so much as an adult, because Mouse Trap was dope. Really well put together commercial. This the fact that I still think about it lets you know how good it was. Well, if it isn't Tamagotchi, oh man, Tamagotchi. Remember they had the generic Tamagotchis that you had to feed her it would die, and then later they had like the Digimon Digivice uh, Tamagotchis that you had to shake so it would actually walk around and level up, and every so often you could fight bosses. Tamagotchi can pause. I can pause too. Want to see that again? Tamagotchi, the original virtual reality pet. Your care determines the pets you get. The original virtual reality pet, because I'm guessing Digimon was already on the horizon. 
I always respected kids who could complete a whole Lego set, but I was never one of them. I guess I just wasn't patient enough. I feel like I'm more patient now and will probably get more out of Lego. Then again, you know, that Lego movie was pretty great, too. I wonder if that colored, uh, colored my feelings on it. I helped, what is it like, my, uh, what is it like, my cousin, who's much younger, put together, like, uh, Luke Skywalker's, uh, Y-Wing? Or was it an X-Wing? Yeah, Luke Skywalker's X-Wing one Christmas, and I'm like, god damn, these things got friggin' complicated. Joel needs a Lego room in his house, I'd watch that stream. Yeah, I saw that, JT Wizzy. I gotta get back into Digimon, because I always, like... Like, when I was young, I watched more Pokemon than Digimon, but, like, looking back on it now, Digimon was the superiorly written series. Because everyone was a little different. And, like, there was actual character development and stuff. I know they did, like, what is it, like, a, like a couple adventure reunion pieces that I never actually saw, but always meant to. Oh, I was definitely into both. There was no doubt about that. Kikar was pretty good. I liked Battleship a lot, too. I played a lot of Battleship growing up. Adventure Try, yes, that was the one. I always meant to watch that. Oh, look, they got the fancy talking Battleship, too. Yeah, that one takes me back. That's a fun one. I had original Battleship. Oh, pfft. What the hell is this? Oh, moon shoes, or moon boots, as they were sometimes also called. Again, nothing is as fun as how they're making this look, and I'm sure these didn't work the way they were supposed to. I'm sure many kids broke their ankles on moon shoes. And I got big feet, too, so, like, moon shoes would have been no good for me. nothing like a Jeep, tough and rugged, wide and mean, a hill climbing, low toting driving machine. And here's another Jeep to hit the this, scene. This is the one I had. I talked about this at the beginning. This was totally the one I had and crashed right away. Gave me anxiety about driving ever since. Thanks, Mom and Dad. I totally had this one. I totally crashed and fell out. Hell of a thing. <laughs> Your parents can put them together easily, and they'll go crazy trying to. What's Barbie's thing now? She's had a dog, she's wrapped. Now she can do stuff with her hair. Can you believe this toy was as popular as it was? All the times where they were just really, really uh, pulling at straws. Yeah, she had a house. She was a homeowner. Yeah, dye my hair Barbie. Ooh, Simpsons commercial. The Simpsons from Mattel. Man, it's hard to believe how The Simpsons used to look when the show started to what it looks like now. I loved The Simpsons and watched it religiously. I have almost no Simpsons merchandise. Which is weird to think, isn't it, that you can love something so much but not have the merchandise? Huh. It's funny. And I know they have so many Simpsons figures of, like, every character. Hey girls, we know you love spending money at the mall. Now play a board game about spending money at the mall. Man, these toy commercials really didn't think much of young women, did they? Oh, oh, there you go. You, again, I think someone mentioned this in the chat, too, the, you know, one that gives girls credit cards. Yeah, boy, they stereotyped the shit out of girls in this era. I mean, I'm sure they still do, but... Okay, Perfection, I remember this one, too. Yeah, I remember playing this one. That was pretty fun. Yeah, cementing bad habits in our youth. <laughs> That's not to say boys weren't also stereotyped, too. You know, they love weapons and vehicles. But still. Oh, Genesis does what Nintendo don't, everybody. 16-bit sports action. Oh, Michael Jackson, back when we were still okay with showing him and stuff. 
Get Joe Montana free, Pat Riley free, Buster Douglas free, Super Monaco GP free. I mean, it was a good ad campaign, no doubt about that. By a 16-bit Genesis system. Back when the console wars were real, man. Once upon a time in the sewer, there were four cute little petals. Who suddenly went through this incredible mutation process that became the Teenage Mutant Ninja Okay, th these I do remember, these transforming turtles. a sweet, charming rock musician. Who goes out of control, changes and mutates into Bebop. Was Bebop a rock musician? Was that literally his origin? I know they always change the turtles' origins. I didn't know that. Now. That is really hurting my ears. That was loud. Man, I hope these sound alike covers don't get me in trouble on Twitch or when I try and upload these later. Rollerblading was super huge in the 90s, but you really shouldn't get your baby to rollerblade. Nor then you should get your baby to tattoo or smoke. Probably a bad idea. Yeah, the Beach Boys have done a lot of things they should be ashamed of, my lord Xavier. If you're ever, uh, what is it like to watch music content on, uh, YouTube, check out Todd in the Shadows. He covered probably their worst album this week, which is pretty funny. I don't think I'd call the Beach Boys punk rock. They were more like surf rock dad music. I do like the Beach Boys, don't get me wrong. Yeah, fucking so we finally got our slime and it's Nickelodeon Gak slime. Okay, Sky Okay, so they had Sky Dancers. That was the girls' version. Then the boy version was Dragon Flies with a Z. That was really popular at the time. You'd come up with the boy version and the girl version to try and get both markets. And I remember they both had like back to back shows. The ending theme to Dragonflies is still pretty dope. Flight is might. Hey, G.I. Joe, I'm surprised it took so long for this. Cool. G.I. Joe always had really solid toys. Real ninja action. Not like that fake-ass ninja action. This is real ninjas. Yeah. And the and the tr you know, the commercials for these were so good because they basically shot little action movies. Oh yeah, okay. Someone mentioned this in the chat too. Don't wake daddy. Now why why are you trying so hard not to wake your father? Was he drinking the night before? Is he abusive? I was never afraid of waking my father. There is some dark undercurrent to this commercial. Why? What will happen if you do? <laughs> uh, here we go. Barbie's a vet now. Barbie, why do you keep changing jobs? Do you keep getting fired? Are you on the run from someone, Barbie? What, what, what is your problem? I don't know anyone who changes jobs the same way Barbie changes jobs. That's a heartbreaking job being a pet doctor, I'm not gonna lie. She is a Jill of all trades. And master of none? I don't know. Like Tickle Me Elmo, feed me Pumba. Yeah, farts are funny. Poop jokes for the win. Okay, I remember this one too, if only because of the jingle. That toy looks like a lot to clean up. I'm sure as a kid I would love it, but now as something resembling an adult, that's just too much to clean up. She's looking for fulfillment. You're right, New Genesis. She hasn't found that perfect fit yet. That's why Barbie keeps having, you know, identity crises. Her world keeps getting retconned. Okay, Gretzky. It's just you. Oh, man. Oh, my dad loved this one. Oh, yay. Yeah, yeah. This one takes me back. Yeah, remember when games came with manuals you had to read when everything wasn't tutorialized to death? Oh, yeah, Gretzky 98, eh? Oh, that's a humdinger right there. 
Canadians do love hockey. I wish my violin was an electric guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Years before School of Rock. Also, hey, troll dolls. Man, that troll movie got a sequel soon, so trolls came back. Trolls have had an interesting history of the dude who uh, created them uh, never actually got to make any money off them in the United States due to, like, a copyright uh, issue. Like, he forgot to fill out a form. So everyone was allowed to make, like, their own uh, copycats. Hey, Star Wars. Now, this was Star Wars in the 90s, too, so this was, like, still trying to sell the nostalgia of old Star Wars because the prequels wouldn't be around for a while. I remember I didn't actually much care about Star Wars toys at that time, too, because it's like, oh, you mean those old movies? I like the movies and everything. But, you know, I saw more as a movie as a toy. It wasn't until later till we got into, like, prequel mania where it's like, no, I gotta own some of these. Terrible choice. Again, why Why do they want me to eat the Play-Doh? This time they actually are eating them. Those probably tasted horrible, I could only imagine. Yeah, that's when the VHS of the Lucas Cuts came out, you're right. Again, I remember this commercial a lot, too. Eh, Hungry Hippos is always fun, can't mess with that one. Yeah, eating Play-Doh, it's just training a whole society for when Soylent Green eventually becomes a thing, no doubt about it. Man, they played this one a lot. This one is just scarred into my mind, this one. Okay, I vaguely remember this one. Again, looks uh, looks like a virus cell, doesn't it? Looks like something that's going to be attacking my white blood cells. Which, you know what, JT Wizzy? That was progressive at the time. They were trying. How do we make balls more interesting? Again, vaguely remember this one. They tried so hard to make ultimately boring games seem super exciting. That was like the coolest thing it had. Instead of rolling a die, you hit the thing. Which I guess means you never lose the dice. Tiger puts arcade action in the palm of your hand. No, you don't. I've already talked about how this is a lie. You lie, Tiger Games. Pick up and throw newspapers, avoid obstacles, and add subscribers while breaking scoring records and windows. Subscribers back when they were just things for papers and not things I asked people to do on my YouTube channel. Oh yeah, subscribe by the way if you're having everyone. I have to do that. I'm sorry. Look how hyped that kid is. He looks like he won the lottery. Wasn't it like Adam Sandler was supposed to make a Candyland game but didn't? This girl got tired out playing Candyland. She is such a hardcore, intense MLG Candyland player. She tired herself out. Your child's first games from Milton Bradley. Oh, hey, Rugrats. Man, I have not watched Rugrats in forever. This 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 had to be like early season Rugrats too. This was like before they even uh, introduced a bunch of characters. This was before Dill, this was before Susie, this is before so many characters. I remember it being really funny, and you know, because it was a Nickelodeon show, they even put some like more adult jokes in there. Hey, Pokemon took long enough. Ah, uh, I had so many of those little guys. Man, the original 250. Pokemon Master! Ash and 
but you'll never catch them all, everyone. Pokemon is an allegory for life. You can try, but there'll always be more. Always more. Shook over the world, it did. All right, everyone. So there you go. That was fun. Thank you for coming and doing this with me. Uh, I'm glad you all responded to this one the way you did. Uh, I didn't think uh, this one would go over as well as it did, but I will definitely have to try this again. This was this was good stuff. Also, too, I just realized it's 8.11 right now. I have to uh, upload Detective Comics, so that will be going up in a number of minutes on the channel, so check out for that. And uh, I also got to go watch AEW, too, because it's 8 o'clock. But, yes, thank you, everyone who showed up. Thank you, everyone who donated. And because this is so popular, I will probably have to do this again soon. So until then, everyone, bye-bye.